Well, boys, mining with the 3080 right now, and she is at a muy caliente, or quite hot, 110 degrees Celsius on the video RAM. Put that into context for a minute. Alexa, what is 110 Celsius in Fahrenheit? According to my fine-ass digital assistant back there, that's 230 degrees Fahrenheit. But I'm still mining. <laughs> Let me explain why. Alrighty boys, walking into the gamer heaven over here. Trooper 7 is running some last minute updates right now. This bad girl is gonna be sold here. Uh, already have a buyer, obviously. You know him, he's gonna be on the channel. We're gonna talk PC gaming and crypto mining and a bunch of other fun stuff. So, so the Alienware Aurora R11, which already is known to have uh, cooling issues, not so much the R11 and R10, but previous generation Alienware PCs have been known for poor cooling. However, this high ass temperature that I'm seeing right over here has absolutely zero to do with the actual PC case or chassis as Alienware likes to call it. And in fact, this is actually the norm for 3080 cards. 230, was it 200, 230 degree Fahrenheit? That's, that's the norm for video RAM right now. Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna bring you guys over to my screen real quick. We're gonna go over some articles and forums and I wanna talk about why these cards are hitting that kind of sustained high ass temperature while crypto mining. They're pretty hot during uh, gaming too with AAA titles. If you're doing some gaming, some streaming, some 4K video editing, they get pretty toasty. But when you are mining, my God, you could cook eggs or light a cigarette off that bad boy. Alrighty boys, over here at the PC, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. So I've been reading a ton of articles, forums and whatnot, trying to figure out if I'm just taking crazy pills over here. My PC is, my 3080 is rubbing two sticks together, trying to cause a fire inside my case. Or if this is a uh, kind of common, kind of the norm with 3080 and 3090 owners. And it's the latter. So I have a bunch of articles pulled up here. Some of you may already be aware of the issue with the VRAM temperatures on the 3080 and 3090 GPUs, especially the Founder Edition cards, because those only have those only have the stock NVIDIA cooling. Obviously, these third-party manufacturers like MSI and Gigabyte, is it Gigabit, Gigab Gigabyte, they have generally a third fan on there and a little bit beefier heat sinks and whatnot. While gaming, the temperatures of the VRAM on these cards hover around 90 to 103 degrees Celsius. According to NVIDIA, this is within spec and should be fine, air quotes. Then this guy talks about how he's, you know, following the crypto craze and he wants to mine with his gaming PC because you already have this badass GPU. Why would you not want to potentially pay for your gaming PC over time? I engaged an NVIDIA customer service rep and asked if this behavior was normal or if operating these cards at that kind of temperature 24 seven would cause excessive harm. Obviously using your GPU will shorten its lifespan, but there's a difference between getting three years out of a card and getting three months. So we're talking about premature failure. The customer service rep said as long as the core clock temperature was below 70, which while I'm mining, my temperature hovers between uh, 50 and 60 degrees Celsius. So I'm well below their 70, their 70 degrees Celsius recommended core clock, which again, from re reading all these articles of 3080 and 3090 owners, they're also seeing similar core clock speeds, but the VRAM gets fucking hot. As long as the core clock's below 70 and the card is working as expected, the VRAM is within spec to go up to 110 degrees Celsius. That is the absolute hottest I have seen, 110, and it holds that for a while. And then um, my miner software will start throttling the CPU back. I don't know if it's the actual miner software or if it's just the card itself. It's built in security measures throttling back a little bit to get the core temperatures down to about 104, 105 Celsius, which is still very, very hot. If it were to fail under these conditions within three years of purchase, it would qualify for an RMA or replacement. Now, whether NVIDIA customer service reps are qualified to make statements like that, I'm not sure. This gentleman says, oh yes, it's actually an issue for all the cards, but especially bad on founder editions. By the way, this is the Linus Tech Tips um, forum here. So pretty good, reputable resource with you know people that actually are avid PC builders and miners and gamers and probably know a little bit about what they're talking about. Undervolting the system will only help with core temperatures. I'm trying this out with a 65% power limit, that's very low, and max fan speeds, 
and memory temp will never go lower than 100 degrees Celsius. So even at 65% power, which at that point, you're taking a substantial hit to your mining performance. Your mega hash, your performance is way lower. The only time I can get down to 96, which is still kind of warm, is with a negative 300 on the uh, underclock on mem speed, but it's hurting mining performance significantly in doing so. I just can't, I can't have that. Now over here in this article, they do a bunch of gaming tests, and this is from Tom's Hardware, also a very reputable source. They did a bunch of gaming tests on things like Metro Exodus and uh, found, uh, Cyberpunk on a Founder Series 3090. And the memory, the GDDR6, that's the VRAM, temperatures for that card got around 100 while gaming. But then when it says, when coming to Ethereum mining, which if you're using NiceHash, either Legacy Miner or Quick Miner, Ethereum is generally what you're going to be mining through what's called Dagger Hash Moto, which is a built-in miner of the Excavator, which is a program that's in the Quick Miner, because right now Ethereum mining is like the most lucrative. Uh, temperatures got to a whole nother level. When mining with the 3080 and 3090, we found that the VRAM modules would peak at a 110. That's exactly what I'm getting. And the GPU would downclock itself severely to compensate for the ridiculously high VRAM. This occurred on multiple different boards from various vendors. So not just the Founders Editions, um, but also other cards. I have a, it's weird. It's a Founders Edition card technically, but it's inside of an Alienware R11. And Alienware or Dell, they take off the case off of the Founders Edition and put on their own Alienware third-party thermal plate, which is a heat sink on the top and then these cooling fans on the side. So it's not really a Founders Edition, it's an Alienware version card. And that's, a, that's before applying any overclock setting, which some miners do in order to chase every last bit of hash hashing performance. I would never do that. If anything, I would underclock because I want to have some long-term longevity of this 3080. Uh, obviously, I don't just use it for mining. I also stream, video edit, uh, and game with it. So um, I don't want it to fail after three months or anything like that. And to be honest, the stock clock of a 3080, I'm seeing about 95 mega hash, which right now currently with BTC's current price, which is what you get paid out in when you mine through nice hash. Um, after my electrical costs, I generally see between... 8 and $11 a day, generally in the $10 a range, $10 a day after electrical costs range, which is really good. And I don't want to underclock her so significantly that I'm seeing damn near what I saw in my 2060 Super. There are ways to reduce the memory temps, which may cause the 3080 and 3090 to throttle only once the temperature reaches 110. Uh, which is what I'm seeing now. The card doesn't throttle at all until it hits 110 and then it just barely barely throttles itself back to uh, get down to a less than 230 degree Fahrenheit range. We used MSI Afterburner, which by the way, guys, I do have a tutorial how to how to use MSI Afterburner to overclock and underclock GPUs. That'll be linked in the description below. To drop the GPU and MIM clocks as far as negative 450 megahertz on the core and negative 502 megahertz on the random access memory, which didn't do much. Decreasing the power limit to 60% allowed the VRAM temperatures to drop to 90%, but then mining performance also dropped around. I hate when people do that. Somebody just pulled in my driveway to pull a U-turn. I mean, I granted I park in the garage, but that, why do people choose my driveway to pull a fucking U-turn? Like, I'm gonna start laying claymores down, some landmines, you know? Just deactivate them with my, my smartphone whenever I'm getting ready to pull out of my driveway. That might be excessive, but Fuck off. Anyway, but dropping to 60% power limit also reduced 60 to 65 mega hash performance. The high junction temperatures do give us a cause for concern, but it's not clear how they will affect the cards long term because these cards haven't been out very long. 24-7 mining, on the other hand, with memory running at 110 Celsius seems like the sort of thing that could cause a premature failure. We don't have precise answers as to why NVIDIA is allowing their VRAM to hit these temperatures. NVIDIA cards don't appear to start throttling GPU clocks until temperature hits 110. Absolutely what I'm experiencing. If you're a miner, decrease your power limit or hope that these 110 degree temps don't pose a problem. Don't say we didn't warn you. I still love you. Now over here, this is another interesting little thread. I've been mining with my 3080 tough overclock recently to see what memory temps maintain extremely high temps of 100 plus peaking at 108 running at 
negative one negative 150 core clock negative uh 900 plus memory 68 percent power and 70 percent fan speed though the core temps are under control high 50s to low 60s exactly what i'm at but with these settings i'm at almost less than half of the 95 ish mega hash that i was sitting at when pushing it so when i'm running uh right now with my settings in quick miner i'm getting about 95 mega hash a second uh which is good that's 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 very powerful that's a huge bitch and then uh this guy inquires as to uh if water blocks from ek or alpha cool would actually help water cooling his gpu and um this guy responds here's my 3090 that has the same video ram as the 3080 it has more of it though it has 20 five gigabytes of vram as the 3080 has 10 on an ek block with thermal pads and the the ek metal backplate currently running at 118 mega hash a second that's beefly but not that big of a gap between the 3080 and the 3090 which is weird because it's a 700 dollars card versus a 1500 hundred dollar card i'm telling you guys i'm telling you the 3080 is unbeatable when it comes to bang for buck for gaming mining anything it is a it's it's unbeatable with bang for buck right now and this guy has his pictures of his temps right here uh what we're looking at is the gpu memory junction temperature uh 78 60 80 77 so a lot better than the 110 that we're seeing on air cooling so my cpu is water cooled but my gpu is simply air cooled and the cooling inside of an r11 isn't great now the r10 and r11 are 11 percent more efficient when it comes to cooling than previous alienware desktops but still it has a 120 millimeter intake fan and 120 millimeter exhaust fan that's it so two fans total plus there is one on the power supply unit but that's just to you know that's for the power supply so that's not good at all considering trooper 7 back there had three intake fans and one exhaust fan and a huge open like um intake port in the front and granted the r11 does have that kind of turbine design where i'm sure it lets like natural airflow from your room in there but still not great um so what i'm probably gonna do is turn down my maximum power to about 70 or 80 percent i'm going to do some testing i'll make a separate video for you 3080 and 3090 miners out there testing some different clocks on the core clock the memory clock and also the power uh fan speed i'm going to keep that shit at like 100 I, I, my fan speeds are generally at like 100 while i'm mining just keep them running right so i am going to decrease the power in the meantime but eventually i'm gonna try and probably water cool my gpu so i'll have a water cooled cpu and gpu which could which should reduce all my temps significantly inside the case but that's expensive for one like i think the 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 kit that this guy's talking about is like a few hundred dollars so yeah um damn the fucking nose hairs are getting ridiculous boys i'm gonna braid them just like braid them intertwine them with my chest hair That'd be nice so that's my plan is to water cool eventually but it's good to see that this is the norm this is common in the 3080 and 3090 community right now like everyone is seeing this especially with the founders editions cards which the alienware gpu is very similar to the founders edition it's just they took off the the case the shroud and put on their own metal heat sink on the top and some like cooling fins on the bottom that are supposed to work in conjunction with the shape and the design of their r11 and r10 case or chassis as they call it so yeah those are hot ass temperatures those are freaking warm but it's unclear as to if this is normal and nvidia reps as you're as you've seen from those two articles they were basically saying oh as long as the core clocks are good the vram should be just fine but they don't know and you know some customer service rep isn't one of the tech support people or someone that's actually going to get you a replacement card out so they're just trying to keep you with a smile on your face and not worried about your card so that's not really um, valid or something I would buy stock in. But damn, yeah, I just want to share this with you guys. She is a, a hot tamale, boys. If you enjoyed this video, it was informative or entertaining for you. Liking the video helps it to get seen by more people. It helps me to grow my channel, which I greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I do a lot of tutorials. I do a lot of tutorials, crypto mining, as well as how to get you set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as news in the gaming community and industry. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.